Rethink your life, your choice. Rethink your life, your choice. Rethink. Rethink. Rethink your life, your choice. Rethink your life. Rethink your choice. Rethink. Rethink your life, your choice. Rethink. Rethink your life, your choice. Rethink. Rethink. Rethink your life. Your choice. Hello everyone and welcome to Rethink, Your Life, Your Choice. We bring community leaders, advocates, and Winnebago County residents like you together to find solutions to some of the most important health and prevention related issues we face every day. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Emily Deeringer. We're excited to transform Winnebago County by implementing solutions that make a difference in our community's health, where our residents live, work, play, pray, and learn. Our first guests today are part of the SPARK movement at UW Oshkosh. I'll let them talk a little bit about what that means. Um, but joining me today are Dr. Dana Merriman, a faculty member of the Health and Safety Committee at UW Oshkosh, uh, Katie Kronstadt, a uh, UW Oshkosh student uh, with a biology major and a healthcare emphasis, and Anna Carpenter, a health educator with Rethink the Lakeshore Tobacco Prevention Partnership. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, we're glad that you could be here. Um, so Anna, can you tell me a little bit about the SPARK movement and you know how this all came to happen of this idea of a tobacco-free campus? Sure. It started off with an offshoot of the Health and Safety Committee, which Dana is a part of and kind of worked its way into being a group, an ad hoc group of students, faculty, um, classified staff, and other partners around the area like myself with working with Rethink. So as that um, went through and they started pursuing that idea, the American Lung Association's grant um, called SPARK is kind of how that got funded and is that where the logo goes up eventually okay <laughs> <laughs> so the spark logo will be on the screen um, and they started to partner with <laughs> the different um, community groups like rethink as well as um, spark to pursue the idea of a tobacco free campus at UW Oshkosh. So is this spark thing just a UW Oshkosh thing or is it all over the state? It's all over the state. It's different universities that are interested in pursuing the um, idea of a tobacco free campus. There have actually been a, a recent um, group that went smoke free which is River Falls um, and they had a spark grant and as well as many other campuses throughout Wisconsin. Awesome. So that sounds like a great opportunity for UWO to do something um, positive for the, the health of all their um, faculty, staff, and students, and um, employees that work there, and visitors, and everything like that. Um, I'm sure that's already ignited some interesting conversations on, on campus. I know um, from experience, tobacco prevention and control work tends to bring out the best and worst of opinions in everybody. <laughs> um, so Dana, can you um, give us some more information about what's happened so far with the SPARK initiative and the Tobacco Free Campus movement? Sure. Our um, SPARK grant last year, 2012, began in March and we started meeting, but our first public event was actually at Taste of Oshkosh. That's a student organization fair that occurs on the campus mall on um, the day before the start of fall semester classes. And so uh, we had a great setup there. We signed up interested students. We demonstrated um, the, the marketing ploy of uh, uh, other tobacco products flavored and packaged much resembling candy preying on people's childhood memories. Um, and, and so that was our very first kickoff uh, kind of event. It was very well attended. And um, then uh, we got together the permission uh, from the governance groups, and this was about a two-month process, to put out a survey of tobacco attitudes and use on our campus. And that survey ran in the last couple of weeks of November. The timing was unfortunate because it was over the holiday, but nonetheless, we ran the survey. Um, that was our second, or actually, uh, our, our big um, push. Prior to that though, we had an election, as we all remember, a national as well as local elections, and so we hosted, uh, co-hosted with Rethink, a community health forum with some of the candidates. That was in October, 
and um, a portion of that program was all about tobacco control and tobacco's impact on campus and community health. So awesome. we had a, a busy fall, um, and right now what we're doing is um, uh, studying the results of our survey. So when um, is that survey um, coming out? Is that um, something coming up this semester? I think, Katie, were you going to share a little bit about that? Um, what do you got going on coming up in the next couple months or weeks or how long is this going on? Um, to present some of the information from the survey, uh, we're going to have a forum in February on the 6th at 4.30. Um, it's going to be on campus in SAGE uh, 1216. Uh, there we're going to present some of the information from the survey, just educate the campus about the things that we have found and let them ask questions um, about maybe it going into a policy. Some other campuses have had uh, referendums at their elections and so that is a possibility. So we're just kind of looking at that. Other than that, we're just trying to find a lot of on-campus support uh, from other groups like pre-med and the Student Social Work Association said that they really back us on our ideas and we're just trying to find more student support right now. That's awesome. Um, so, when the, the survey results get released at this forum in February, um, you're, are you expecting a wide variety of um, opinions or are you kind of hopeful that everyone is kind of like, yeah, we're on board with this idea or um, are, are you prepared to get into the, well, what about this and what about this and um, just kind of putting the mind at ease of the, the, the campus population that, you know, nothing's written in stone yet kind of a thing, or um, is, is that kind of, it's more of just presenting the information? Uh, well, we're going to present the information, and I think everyone's hopeful that there will be a positive response, but that might not be the case. And so we're just probably going to see what happens at the forum, who turns out, and um, not that the whole campus didn't respond to the survey, mm -hmm. so from the results that we have, um, we can't really base that necessarily on the entire campus, so maybe, um, I guess we're just really hopeful at this point, but we'll see where it goes after the forum, I guess. And what day was that forum again? Um, the forum was on February 6th at 4.30. February 6th at 4.30. So I hope if you're listening or watching that you can turn out, it's for everybody, right? Not just U of mm -hmm. campus people. The, uh, all of the campus community. Awesome, excellent. Um, so, so what would happen? What potentially could happen then after this forum? Um, is there? Is that gonna? What's the next step after that? Anyone can answer that question, I guess. I can take it. We haven't done a whole bunch of education yet. We've kind of hit the key leaders um, and faculty and staff and student groups on campus, the overall governmental groups, but we haven't kind of started that researchy like these this is information that we have this is why it's a good idea to present a tobacco free policy and this is why people might support it um, these different products are a little bit as Dana was saying earlier a lot bit actually not just a little bit um, directed toward a younger crowd and especially um, with the different flavors that it includes a lot more appealing to first-time users so I think a big push for this next semester and chunk of our time is going to be education and making sure that the campus population is aware of what products are out there and how we can improve that. Yeah. The stakes are actually really high. And, and another uh, event that we uh, attended with Spark funding, um, all three of us actually, was uh, on October 30th, there was a major Spark conference at Madison. and. Um, a vice president of a health insurance company uh, provided us all with some data which I was really unaware of the impacts that tobacco use have on the cost of employing a person. So we're all aware that cigarettes cost money and so is chewing tobacco. That's out of your individual budget, but I was truly shocked at the costs to institutions in health insurance, fire insurance, things I'd never even thought about. and so. Um, we're pretty sure that most of the campus, employees and students alike, are unaware of some of these other non, 
not exactly health related, not directly health related, but economic issues surrounding tobacco use. And so our goal, I think it's fair to say, with the forum also is not just to release the results, but also to provide education about what's really at stake. Mm -hmm. and, and then my guess is we'll see how everyone feels once more yeah. after they've had that input and, and thought about it. Yeah, I think a lot of times people, if they're a non-user, a non-tobacco user, they're, oh, well, it's not affecting me, it's not a big deal. And then, well, un until you stand outside of a, a building where someone is smoking, oh, well, then, then that's kind of a big deal to me because I don't want to walk through yeah. a smoky doorway or whatever. But then layered on top of that is like, oh, did you even know that, that some of these products are, are targeting your children or your, your friend's children or um, yeah. the, all the economic factors? And you might not be able to... Um, be hired somewhere because you're a tobacco user, you know, mm -hmm. so um, we know that, you know, policies like this can help people like get over the hump to quit. Um, so that's a whole, whole nother, you know, component in the, the health cost, the health care cost too, that, you know, a, a quitter costs less money than a user. Mm -hmm. So especially in these times of economic looking for new ways to save money because we've been spending a lot, um, universities can save a lot of money too, and that was another presenter, um, a chancellor from a university that had recently gone tobacco free had said that they had saved quite a chunk of money and to think that that could be the difference between a student not getting a scholarship or not and um, the, an increase overall in tuition for all students and just implementing a policy like this could be a potential saver. Right. Not only a health cost saver, but a life saver. <laughs> I throw my, my two cents in yep. there on that. Yep. Um, well, thank you, um, you guys, for joining us today um, to talk about the tobacco-free campus movement. It's still a movement. It's still in the exploratory phase. So um, if you've got an opinion about it, you can, you know, contact what what's the email uw tobacco free at uwosh dot edu tobacco free at uwosh dot edu so you can voice your opinion there someone will get back to you um, so I know this is something that's been stewing at least in in my head for the last few years so I'm really excited to see where where it goes forward mm -hmm. from here so um, I, I I applaud your efforts and along with everyone else that's that's working on the committee with you. Um, so, so keep it up. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. So switching gears here, we're going to um, take a look back at uh, 2012 and some of Rethink's accomplishments. Um, we, we do a lot of stuff in the community, and sometimes we, we forget all the great things that we've done. Um, so we want to recognize all the great people that have helped um, uh, get those, those efforts off the ground and pilot those pilot projects and um, really make a difference in the health of the Winnebago County residents. So um, we've got a little montage video here for you, so um, we hope you enjoy it. <laughs> 